I can hear you. She can hear you. Yes, much better. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Can you hear anything out of your IFB? Yeah, now I can. She said yes. <laughs> At first, I couldn't hear hardly anything, though. I don't know why. That's a yes. Yes, I can hear you. You're welcome. The first time he mentioned that, he was like, you know, I said a hit. I, 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 I was like, what do you mean? Hit, 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 you asked Kaylee. Hit, 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 and I can to the bang, 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 set up, jump, and bring it to the rhythm of the boogie the beat. <laughs> Details of a Murfreesboro robbery get glazed over, but we have the story. While MTSU, the site of a vandalism, that left a serious warning. And find out if the Predators left it, left it all on the ice for their last home game. Well, all those stories plus your latest weather, MT10 News starts right now. This evening, I'm Kaylee Plemons. And I'm J.R. Smith. Welcome to MT10 News. It was just another glazed-filled day at Donut Country until one man decided to make a withdrawal. Police responded to the donut shop on Memorial where witnesses say an African-American male, about 5'5", five five, thin, wearing a black ski mask and a navy blue jacket, walked in and demanded the money in the register. Witnesses also claimed the male was carrying a knife, though some say that they couldn't see the weapon. The suspect took $75 and ran on foot towards MAPCO on Memorial. There was no confirmation on whether or not the suspect has been caught. A residence hall vandalism has left MTSU Crime Stoppers on alert. Earlier today, markings were left on a wall of a female restaurant in Jim Cummings Hall. The vandalism include writings that were warning a bombing this Friday at 4 p.m. An email was sent out to MTSU in hopes of figuring out who the culprit is. Well, if anyone with any information could contact Crime Stoppers. An unfortunate ATV accident has claimed the life of a 10-year-old boy. Police and ambulances were on the scene in Decker, Tennessee, where a male and female juvenile were overturned on an ATV and sustained critical injuries. They were both taken to Southern Tennessee Regional Health System for evaluation. The female only sustained an injured left arm, but 10-year-old Wylan Watson was ejected from the vehicle and sustained injuries to the head. He later passed away in the hospital. Police are investigating further into the incident. And one local father is organizing a search party in hopes of finding his son. The family of Riverdale High School student Devin Bond is asking for your help to find him with the community this Thursday and Friday. Devin's father is asking for people to meet at the parking lot of Walmart on Joe B. Jackson Parkway at 8 a.m. to search the area. Plans are to send a small group off into the trail into Barfield Crescent Park. Anyone with ATVs is encouraged to show up to work off-road areas as well as nearby railroad tracks. And if you have any information on, where the, on the whereabouts of Devin Bond, you are asked to contact the Murfreesboro Police Department immediately. A man is found dead soon after injuring his girlfriend in Nashville. Police respond around 1130 to a, to a public housing development in University Court. 30-year-old Samantha Hall was found shot in both legs. She claimed that her boyfriend, Dallas Cato, shot her. Cato was found dead inside of his car due to a gunshot wound after leaving the scene and crashing the vehicle. Police have not ruled out the possibility that Cato shot himself. The sentencing for former sheriff of Murfreesboro, Robert Arnold, is moving up quicker than intended. Arnold will now face a judge on May the 4th after a preview of his motion to reschedule it to another date. He was originally going to be sentenced later this September. Arnold pled guilty this past January to wire fraud, honest services fraud, and extortion. Those are three of the 14 federal grand jury indictments in late May of 2016 that accused Arnold, his uncle John Vanderveen, at and Joe Russell of illegally profiting off inmates through the sale of electronic cigarettes. 
A bill that will make a big change to school buses is moving forward. The Transportation Committee of the Tennessee House has voted 9-7 to in favor of a bill that will require buses made after 2018 to have seat belts for all passengers. The bill will also require that all buses being used from 2023 onward must be equipped with seat belts as well. This bill comes after the bus accident that killed six elementary aged kids, but has been in the works for years. It is expected to cost the state around $11.7 million and at local levels over $70 million. A new education plan is hoping to keep Tennessee schools on their toes. The new evaluation plan that was released yesterday by the Tennessee Education Department will find public schools receiving letter grade ratings based on their performance. State Education Commissioner Candace McQueen hopes that this plan will also make schools more transparent and give parents much better information about how their neighborhood schools are operating. The first set of grades will not be available until fall of 2018. The Tennessee Department of Health has created a program that is hoping to make young men physically, mentally and emotionally healthy. The program is called Coaching Boys into Men and it is a mentoring program with an interesting twist. The mentors are sports coaches and they are in place to help young male athletes build attitudes and behaviors that, present, that prevent relationship abuse, harassment and sexual assault. This week is National Youth Violence Prevention Week, and so the program serves as a positive step in that direction. Uh, well, you know, Kaylee, today the weather just, I mean, it blew me away. I, I don't know what more to say about it. <laughs> I know it did me too. I even caught a picture of a funnel cloud today at about 4 o'clock. It was really scary. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> I know, but um, we're going to toss it right back over to Piper Evans and find out what's going on with the weather. Piper. Well, Kaylee and JR, the wind is crazy out here right now. It's about at a 15 miles per hour. It feels like a 40 miles per hour, if you ask me. Uh, my hair has been going different directions out here, but it feels incredible out here. Contrast to what we had earlier. About two hours ago, there was a funnel cloud right over there above the BAS, the, the Jones Building of Business. So there was like a funnel cloud right over there. Um, but the wind is going to continue to keep getting faster and faster. We are going to be under a wind advisory tonight because a thunderstorm is another line of thunderstorms are coming in later on around nine o'clock tonight. So please be cautious of that. Um, always go over your safety tips and have um, have your cell phone charged as well in case the power does go out so you can keep up with media outlets to keep yourself safe because that's all we want here is safety. And now um, before I get blown away, I'm going to send it back to the desk. Well, still ahead on the MT10 News, find out how organizations are hoping to bring an end to human trafficking. And President Trump has brought his You're Fired motto with him to the White House. That's coming up next on MT10 News. Why should you include avocados as part of your family's balanced diet? It's as simple as... One, two, three. <laughs> Number one. Avocados fill you up. Avocados contain unsaturated fats, good fats your body needs to help with the absorption of key nutrients. Be hungry right now. Ah. Number two. Ooh, avocados are good for you. Avocados are naturally cholesterol and sodium free, plus they contain nearly 20 vitamins and nutrients. Me need vitamins and nutrients and number three, avocado delicious. Try avocados oh. in place of ingredients higher in saturated fat. Avocados taste great in sandwiches, salads, and even in baked goods like cookies. Avocado cookies? This match made in heaven! This is your new kitten, or your new puppy. Every day, 70,000 puppies and kittens just like them are born in the U.S. Cute, right? Well, what's not cute is that half of all litters are accidents. And when a kitten has a litter of oopsies and a puppy has a litter of uh-ohs, pretty soon you have thousands and thousands of OMGs. And that leads to millions of pets being killed in shelters each year. But if 80% of pet owners say they believe in spaying and neutering, then what gives? Well, it turns out those sweet little fuzzballs can get pregnant sooner than you think. A lot sooner. But here's the good news. You can stop the accident before it happens. You just have to remember one number. Four, as in four months. When you bring home Maggie or Ruby or Puddle or Clyde, get them fixed at four months. 
it can be old enough to get pregnant, and it's definitely young enough to make a difference. Prevent more, fix at month four. You may have noticed some tables set up outside of the student union yesterday. Well, Davida Johnson joins us now with this story. On Tuesday, April 4th, organizations that work towards eliminating human trafficking got together in Murfreesboro to bring awareness to MTSU students. Several organizations geared toward ending human trafficking gathered outside of MTSU Student Union. We primarily work in Tennessee right now, but we plan to expand and what we do is we rescue victims and work in the investigations, not only with po the police, but independently. And our main goal is just spreading the awareness and making sure people know what to look for. To share what they do and bring awareness. There are over 20 million cases of human trafficking in the U.S., which is the highest it has ever been. I'm Shannon Giggy with Freedom's Promise. We focus on prevention of human trafficking in Cambodia, primarily through community development. We work in several communities in Cambodia, both rural and urban, and we work alongside local partners. And in most cases, it could have been prevented. These organizations work within local communities to rescue victims of human trafficking, children and women included. In the United States, there are about 2,000 beds available in safe homes where intentional specific care is given to survivors of human trafficking. These associations offer aftercare recovery programs. So it took about four years for Becca to get the company started, but she started Thistle Farms. And that's the workplace for the women of Magdalene. We make lotions and soaps and shower gels and head and toe, all lip balms and lip smoothies and candles, and everything is handmade, hand labeled by a survivor of addiction, human trafficking, abuse, and prostitution. Several organizations geared toward ending human trafficking gathered outside of MTSU Student Union. We primarily work in Tennessee right now, but we plan to... Various organizations have already helped a number of women and children reclaim their lives. Their goal is to give them a space to heal while embracing them with love. For NT10 News, I'm Davida Johnson. Thanks, Davida. For any further information on preventing human trafficking, you can visit www.ithastostop.com. President Trump has passed out a pink slip to a high-level strategist. Steve Bannon, the former chief strategist of the National Security Council, lost his position earlier today. This comes after the controversial decision that President Trump has made previously to give him access to the high-level meetings. Critics of the president felt that it was inappropriate for a political advisor to play a role in national security. Despite being removed from his position, Bannon will still remain as one of President Trump's closest, closest advisors, according to officials. A 5K race that brings a Middle Tennessee community together. That's the Jordan Hackett 5K race, started in 2003 by Karen and Stephen Hackett. It was founded in honor of their son, Jordan, who passed away at four months old due to a blood infection. The race, held every year, also helped fund the Jordan Hackett Foundation, which donates to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, the Ronald McDonald House, as well as giving local scholarships. The race, as well as the foundation, has impacted not only the lives of the Hackett's, but also those in the community. For more information on this year's race, please visit the JordanHackettFoundation.com. Still ahead on MT10 News, learn about how a potential documentary crew that will be making their way to Middle Tennessee area. And find out if those gas prices are going to go down anytime soon. That's all coming up next. And find out what's up with your weather and my extended forecast after the break. Everyone deserves to have a decent place to live. Everyone. Todos. When a future homeowner partners with Habitat for Humanity to build or improve a home, they build a better future for themselves and their families. For my family. Para por su familia. Por mi familia. With a little help, we all have the potential to stand on our own. Through shelter, we empower. Visit Habitat.org to provide help to families like these today. Time is the one thing that we want more of as a St. Jude parent. Without the donors, I wouldn't have my Audrey. 
el que San Yu no cobra ni un centavo para nosotros significa quitarnos todo ese estrés, esa preocupación y podernos enfocar en nuestra hija. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. They take care of our housing. They take care of our food. In addition to the best medical treatment that my daughter could ever have. So it allows me to focus on my daughter and getting her better. Your seat cushion can be used to grant wishes. Who said that? Hello? Really can, you know. You talking to me? Sure am. Because the airline miles you earn and donate to make a wish can help send thousands of kids on their wish trips. So donate to make a wish today. You really should, you know. You really should. And give wishes wings, because wishes work wonders. If you live in Tennessee, you may just reconsider that road trip that you're fixing to take. Rutherford County and other surrounding counties in Middle Tennessee are seeing higher gas prices. The reason for the soaring prices is due to the shortage of the oil in Middle East. Due to the gaslam tax and the upcoming summer where travel times are at an all-time high, you may just be seeing those prices increase maybe just a little bit more. Governor Haslam has a new plan for gas tax and the public will be able to see this go into play this summer. Rutherford County Schools are planning to add 142 more jobs by 2018 with their 7.3% budget increase. The spending for Rutherford County Schools is going to rise by over $24 million. The county started this school year with an economic budget of a little over $340 million. There are currently 44,000 students enrolled at Rutherford County Schools. This year alone, enrollment is expected to rise by over 1,000 students. This is good news for the upcoming MTSU graduates who are going to be soon looking for careers. Candidates to come into the field of education, as that is one of the fields that has seen a deficit or a decline. Teacher jobs are going up by 100 positions. Other job openings include educational assistants, nurses, custodians, bookkeepers, and computer technicians. Murfreesboro's own Laverne High School might be the site for an upcoming documentary. Learning Tree Productions could possibly be teaming up with Laverne to showcase the day-to-day -day workings of a public high school. The focus would be a glimpse into public education and the executives at Learning Tree said Laverne isn't too big or too small, but a right size American school. If approved, filming would begin this fall. Learning Tree Productions has produced several programs on Food Network and A&E. Well, many MTSU students live off campus and think it's a choice, but is it really? MT10 reporter Brianna Clark tells us students don't really have a choice. For those interested in staying on campus next semester, housing applications are still available. Well, JR, I really hope that the weather this weekend is going to really increase because I'm so excited for my birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's hope that the weather doesn't blow those candles out. Oh, goodness <laughs> but, but, but to see if it will or not, Piper Evans joins us now with your main look at weather. Piper. Well, Kaylee, I have good news. It looks pretty good for your birthday this weekend. We're going to have a nice springtime temperature um, weekend ahead. Um, but currently in your area, it's a little bit under 75 degrees. It's about in the mid 70s. It feels amazing outside compared to what we had earlier today. We had hail. We had um, 
even like a funnel cloud, a tiny funnel cloud form over um, a building here, but it didn't touch the ground. It was moving way too fast, so that's good. Um, but the wind is also at a, like a 20 miles per hour. The wind is blowing really hard out there. We are going to be under a wind advisory tonight. That wind is blowing in a new line of thunderstorms coming in around 9 o'clock tonight and a lot of rain also. And humidity is up as well at about a 53. Um, coming up for your week, we're going to have um, for tonight rain and storms. Um, not as bad as um, they're going to kind of die out a little bit, so they're not going to be as powerful. But please take caution and please be careful and remember your storm safety tips. We are going to have cooler temperatures. A cold front is going to come in. Um, a low pressure system is going to come in through um, Tennessee. That means that cooler temperatures are going to be here as well. That for our lows, we're going to have temperatures about 45 degrees at night. So it's a little bit chillier than what we're used to. But like I said, we are going to have a nice weekend ahead for that as well. Now we're going to move on here into um, the radar. Now here's the storms that are just moving through. Um, it's going to be clear for a good while, but over here, this is the storms that are going to build up a little bit and they're going to keep pushing on to Middle Tennessee and they're going to cause a little bit more thunderstorms around 9 o'clock tonight. So please be careful. If you have anything to get done, I would get them done right now because we are going to have some um, rain come in. It's a little bit nasty and it's a little bit dangerous to drive in the rain. So um, again, um, a lot of people ask me what's the difference between a watch and a warning. When you hear thunderstorm watch, that means that there are possible thunderstorms going to happen. And to stay informed and just to be ready, that doesn't have any confirmation. That's just to basically prepare you. Now, when you hear the word warning, this is the dangerous one. If you ever hear tornado warning or thunderstorm warning, that means that you're going to have um, some, that means that they've spotted it on their radar. Um, and again, today we were in the moderate. There's a different, there's different storm categories. We were in the moderate, which is very dangerous, could produce tornadoes, but we lived through it and nothing really bad happened, so we came out fortunate right there. Here's tonight's forecast. We're going to top off in the mid 40s. It's going to be really chilly, and we have a 60% chance of rain in the Nashville area. And as we move on to the radar or the weather map for tonight, we're going to have, or for tomorrow, I'm sorry, we're going to have rain through Tennessee. Um, Till about in the morning time, it's going to clear out around noon, so it's going to be a pretty nice day tomorrow. And as we move on to your seven-day forecast, um, I'm tripping over this. Um, we're going to have some uh, nice. We're going to have some rain in the morning, 70% chance. The lows, though, that's what I really want to pay attention to. They're going to be really low throughout the week. Um, 34 on Friday for the low, and um, we're going to have temperatures back up into spring, 70 to 80 temperatures for the rest of the week next week. Well, that's it, and I'm going to now send it back to Kaylee and Jr. Thank you, Piper. Still ahead on MT10 News, find out about an MTSU victory that was four years in the making. And a fundraiser has residents taking a swing to help kids. That's all coming up next on MT10 News. Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Idle hands. They say they're the devil's workshop. Give idle hands a place to go, a purpose, and they're capable of amazing things. From Iraq and Afghanistan, our brave warriors are coming home, wounded. Some with wounds you can see, some with wounds you can't see. Wounded Warrior Project was created to support our men and women coming off the battlefield. Please help carry these warriors the rest of the way home. Get involved at WoundedWarriorProject.org. It started with the original care package and millions more like it. Passed from hand to hand across land and sea to help survivors in the aftermath of war. As we grew, we found better ways to help those in need. Ways to make a real difference. Not just today, but tomorrow as well. Be the difference in people's lives. Help deliver lasting change at care.org. 
Many MTSU students live off campus and think it's a good choice, but is it really? MT10 reporter Brianna Clark tells us why students don't really have a choice. Most freshmen live on campus because their parents want them to, but had they not, they would miss out on things. I think everybody should live on campus their freshman year so they can network and make friends, but after that, you should find your own independence. Typically, the freshman body makes up 10% of the student body. And MTSU housing can only house 10% of students, but housing isn't dedicated to freshmen, leaving some to move off campus. I think being off campus and being thrown into it is, is tough. It's tough for an 18 year old to be off campus, having to paying bills. Even if every single student pay their housing fee and turn in their application on time, most students will still get denied, missing out on the freshman experience. I would live on campus because it is a very great asset to a student's well-being, the, their full well-being. Um, it'll help them be more well-rounded. I feel like that makes a student successful living on campus. Getting so the problem is there isn't really enough housing and the dorms aren't really up to par, making some students go elsewhere. I think it's an MTSU thing. I think if they did provide nicer houses, then maybe I would stay on campus. But For News 3, I'm Brianna Clark. For those interested in staying on campus next semester, housing ap applications are still available. Nissan is proud to announce their seventh year of sponsoring a local nonprofit special kids therapy event. Therapy Center's golf tournament. This is the center's 18th year organizing this classic and it will begin Thursday, May the 4th and Friday, May 5th. The game will be held here in Murfreesboro at Indian Hills Golf Course. We ask members of the community to share their thoughts on this event. I feel like Nissan, by doing this, it's bringing a very heartfelt gesture into play and it's gonna bring the community together and put smiles on these kids' faces. All right, well, Kaylee, uh, MT, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Those are the words, right? I like it, JR. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, let's go over to Jacob Quarter to join us with sports. Jacob. Thanks, Kaylee. Um, for the first time since 2013, your men's baseball team took down the Vols. After scoring six huge runs in the second inning, MTSU had a strong bullpen effort to keep the lead against the Vols. Leading 6-3 after the second inning, the Raiders brought out closer Tyler Holcomb to finish out the game. The Vols only managed three hits total off of three empty pitchers. The Blue Raiders are now preparing for their eight-game home stretch, beginning with Old Dominion this Friday. With soccer season underway, local high school Oakland is back at it. The Patriots are coming off of a shutout away win against Siegel 3-1 and are ready to run with Stewart's Creek this week. Stewart's Creek isn't having so hot of a season so far, so let's see if they can bounce back for this exciting road game. The game is this Friday and starts at 7 p.m. The Lady Red Hawks played the Lady Patriots in a big-time matchup yesterday. Stewart Creek went to Oakland for a big conference game. Oakland was up until the seventh inning where Stewart Creek took off. They scored five runs to take the lead and won the, and won the game 7-5. After losing last night, the Grizzlies took looked to weather the storm against the Thunder. The Memphis Grizzlies play the Oklahoma Thunder at the Grindhouse. The Grizzlies are 42 and 36, while the Thunder are 44 and 33. The Grizzlies are two and a half games behind the Thunder. Russell Westbrook has 41 triple doubles and could beat the record. He still has to beat Memphis, though, at home. Can he do it, or can the Grizzlies stop him and get the win? Well. That looks like that's it for this week on MT10 News. Let's send it back to the desk. All right, and uh, real fast, let's uh, send it to Piper with our last look at weather. Piper. All righty, well, um, let's just run over your seven-day forecast one last time. For tomorrow, we're going to have showers in the morning, and the temperature is going to be about 60 degrees, but the lows are going to be really low as well. Um, and we're going to have a pretty nice weekend, partly cloudy skies, and then a little bit of thunderstorms on Tuesday and partly cloudy skies again on Wednesday. Now I'm going to send it over to Kaylee and JR. Thank you, Piper. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm Kaylee Plemons. And I'm J.R. Smith. We hope that you can join us again next Monday for MTTN News. And meanwhile, stay safe out there tonight, Rutherford County.